Portrait by Edward Hopper. He was born in 1882 in a small town on the Hudson River, 25 miles from New York City. A loner by nature, shy and moody, he was always anxious about his ability to create. He studied art in New York and eventually traveled to Europe, visiting art museums in many countries. Settling in Paris, his personal style and technique began to take form. But when he returned to New York, he paid his living expenses by working as a commercial illustrator, painting when he could, and began to see opportunity in painting scenes of everyday life. In his early 40s, he married another artist, and he died at the age of 84. Hopper combined the landscapes of America with the expression of the feelings of the people. Although he painted his subjects in an instantly recognizable and realistic manner, he gave them a feeling of loneliness and separation. His style was brilliant light, bold shadows, and bright colors, and the shapes were massive, solid, and very stable. He thought carefully about every brushstroke he added. You can see these characteristics in this self-portrait. Light was one of Edward Hopper's main concerns when he made a painting. He liked to show early morning and late afternoon contrasting shadows. Here in second story sunlight, the strong sunlight highlights the house and the figures on the balcony and contrasts with the deep purple shadow on the side of the house. We see also the strong geometric shapes that this artist loved to paint. What shapes can you find here? There is, in addition, a contrast between the two people enjoying the sunshine. The older woman appears content to relax and read her book, while the girl seems eager to get off the balcony and be a part of life. Did you notice the cool colors and the feeling of fresh air and lots of space? Along the sidewalk of the city street, we see only a fire hydrant and an old fashioned barber pole highlighted by the early sunlight. When he first made this picture called Early Sunday Morning, Edward Hopper put a figure in one of the windows above the little shops, and then he painted it out. What difference in the mood of the painting would the presence of a person have made? The shops are anonymous, as are the windows of the apartments above them. Hopper has been true to his purpose of painting a mood rather than a particular place. Nighthawks is a picture of a glass windowed restaurant of the years before World War II, a diner at night. It was painted as part of Edward Hopper's interest in small time businesses in a big city. The background shows a row of stores that resemble those in the painting you just saw. The lonely mood of the painting is created by the stillness and the feeling that these people have nothing to do. Notice the nose of the man in the gray hat and blue shirt it almost looks like a beak of a bird. A nighthawk is a kind of bird that flies after dark, searching for moths and other insects for food. So you can see why the artist chose that title. The glass window diner seems to have trapped the people in a kind of cage. The brilliant interior of this late night diner contrasts with the dark neighborhood outside and gives it a moody atmosphere. Now you've learned something about the techniques, styles, and subject matter of Thomas Hart Benton and Edward Hopper. Benton liked to show figures in action and landscapes with strong forms and sometimes textured details in the foreground. Hopper wanted to give a feeling of isolation or separateness to his subjects, and he used light and shadow as well as geometric shapes in his pictures. Let's see now if you can identify two paintings by one of these artists and one painting by the other artist. Be sure to look carefully before you answer. Who could this woman be and what might she be doing alone in this sunny room? She is as anonymous as the row of apartments in the building across the street. There are only window shades, no curtains in the tall windows. But the woman in the rocking chair has tried to make her place more homelike by placing a vase of flowers on the corner table. 
the artist has concentrated on painting an emotional mood rather than an individual person or place, although the plain architectural details and the simplicity of the furnishings reflect his style and add to the moodiness. Who do you think painted this picture called Room in Brooklyn? Did you answer Edward Hopper? In this painting called July Hay, the artist shows us not only two farm workers cutting the hay crop, but also some carefully painted details in the foreground, a tree, rocks, leaves and flowers, and even a shiny black beetle we have the feeling we are peeking from the edge of the woods into the harvest scene. Another clue, but one that the artist used only later in his career. Notice the detail with which the artist painted the textures and how they, like the figures, seem to be in motion. Who do you think made this painting? You were correct if you said Thomas Hart Benton. Where is this well-built Victorian house? The artist offered no clues, except that it is across the railroad tracks when he gave it the title, House by the Railroad. In the cool light, it looks lonesome and uneasy, as if it were remembering better times in the past. The windows seem to stare out at the empty landscape. The artist was more interested in suggesting a mood of isolation than in making a picture of a particular old building, although his interest in architectural details is a clue. Have you decided who the artist is? You are right, Edward Hopper. Here's your chance to look at three more paintings by these artists, Thomas Hart Benton and Edward Hopper. See if you can recognize the artist who painted each of them. Think about subject matter, style, and technique. This Western landscape is called Trail Riders. Find the tiny figures in this powerful painting of the mountains of the American West. They are dwarfed by the magnificent peaks and forests, and yet the artist thought them important enough to name the painting for them. Notice how the swirling clouds echo the melting snowfields and the sky blue lake cupped in the mountain valley. The artist has created rhythm in this painting as well as symmetry, and rising majestically in the center is the triangular shape of the tallest peak. Notice, too, how the artist used value in the painting, ranging from the brightest white to the darkest dark. Did you recognize the style of the artist? If you did, you would have said the artist is Thomas Hart Benton. Lighthouse at Two Lights is one of the lighthouses that the artist liked to paint when he was in New England. From his youth, where he lived not far from the ocean, he was fascinated by nautical subjects. Situated on the rocky shore of Maine, this lighthouse flashed an important warning beacon to ships navigating the coast with products for American industries. It seems to be a sunny summer day, but we can imagine a tremendous winter storm or a foggy night when this light would provide ships with a warning of dangerous rocks. The lighthouse keeper might sometimes feel isolated and sad. This artist used value to give strength to his paintings and you can clearly see how the architectural forms are highlighted by the sunlight against the shadows it created. Who is the painter of this outdoor scene? Edward Hopper, you're right. This dramatic painting is called The Hailstorm. Look how the artist has used mostly diagonal lines and shapes to exaggerate the fury of the storm. The surging land, the leaning tree, the turbulent clouds, the running men and frightened horse, even the slanted shed and the rocks in the foreground give us the feeling of violent action, wind, rain, and bitter cold. Everything is in motion, and the contrast of light and dark forms and the use of texture and rhythm add a lot of drama. Of course, you have recognized the style of Thomas Hart Benton.